Hi, this is Jason Noble with Clear Picture Financial, powered by Prime Capital Investment Advisors. This is Saturday, March 11th, and I think it's so important that we take the time to share relevant information as timely as possible to not just our clients, but also to our listeners to make sure we're providing that information that's relevant and hoping that you could take this information to make better, well-informed decisions with regards to your finances. So let's dive right in. The recent failures of three U.S. banks has raised concerns over the economy and the financial system. The situation is still evolving, and there are plenty of speculation as to what might come next. One recent development is that government officials from the Treasury, Federal Reserve, and FDIC have announced that depositors will make whole to backstop the system and restore confidence. This crisis has already created hardship for many companies and individuals as payrolls are disrupted and access to cash is halted. However, when it comes to investing, it's more important than ever to stay level-headed and focus on the bigger picture. That's why we call ourselves Clear Picture. Okay, so what long-term should investors should know about these bank failures? And what do they reveal about the financial system? Well, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, also known as SVB, it was the first FDI shirt bank failure since 2020 and the second largest in history. This was following two days later by the failure of Signature Bank and the third largest in history. Just a few weeks earlier, these two publicly traded companies had the 14th and 18th largest market capitalization among US banks, respectively. Silvergate, a smaller bank active in the crypto industry, also fell the same week, but through an order and like more of an orderly liquidation. So the bank stocks have struggled due to recent failures. From a market and economic perspective, the main question is whether there is still a wider economic systemic risk to the financial system. This episode reveals that these particular banks grew too aggressively with little to risk management as tech valuation rose and crypto prices rallied over the past several years. While this worked well in a bull market, this reversal of these trends in 2022 make these banks vulnerable to classic bank runs. So how do bank runs occur? A simplified description of a classic banking model is that customers, both businesses and individuals, deposit funds for safekeeping. Banks then use these deposits to make loans or to buy higher quality investment securities, which they hope they can generate profits. This works well as long as their investment assets maintain a grow in value and customers trust in the safety of the deposit. If either of these is not the case, a bank may not have the liquid liquidity to meet its obligation. With this in mind, these recent failures are due to two problematic, two related problems. So the banks accumulated unrealized losses on investment securities as rates spiked. And we see that here in a chart. First, rapidly rising interest rates and the Fed rate hikes over the past year created financial stresses on the bank's balance sheets. Bonds had the worst performance in history in 2022, driving unrealized losses on investment assets, including U.S. Treasuries, as shown on a company chart. Where their banks need to, to book these losses depending on how these securities are accounted for, but this worsens as banks face pressures on deposits. Thus, SVB and others found themselves within these assets were far less as rates rose. Second, SVB's concentration of tech and startup customers made it vulnerable as conditions deteriorated for that sector, just as Silvergate and Signature Bank were both exposed to the slowdown in the crypto industry. Now, Silicon Valley Bank tried to plug this gap by raising fresh capital, but this backfired since it's highly highlighted the liquidity and solvency issues it faced. Like shot and fire in a crowded theater, once there's a perception of solvency problems, a classic bank run can occur swiftly, becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. To a large extent, this played out publicly as many of the startups and VC communities urged companies to move their funds. While government actions were always controversial and subject to political debate, moves by the Treasury, the Federal, and the FD FDIC to backstop customer deposits across the banks are likely help to prevent contagion across the system. At the same time, 
it does not directly address the underlying issues of impaired assets, which depends on the quality of risk and asset liability management at each bank. However, the risk that unrealized losses becomes a solvency issue is mitigated for larger, more diversified banks that are less reliant on deposits, have strong deposit banks, and maintain a higher amounts of capital. Now, these bank failures are the largest since 2008. Now, one reason that investors may be concerned is that there have been few bank failures in recent history, especially since banking legislation, such as the Dodd-Frank Act, was put into place after the 2008 financial crisis. Now, according to the FDIC, there were only eight bank failures from 2019 to 2022, far below the 322 experienced around the global financial crisis or the hundreds that regularly occurred in the 80s and 90s. That said, that being said, Silicon Valley Bank is an outlier, and that is the total deposits of $175 billion, while the eight from 2019 through 2022 had a combined $628 million. Now, naturally, parallels are also being drawn back to 2008, where the last wave of bank failures threatened the global financial system. It's important to remember back then, the problem was not just that all banks held significant amount of mortgage-backed securities and other housing-sensitive assets that ended up being worth only pennies on a dollar. Rather, a significant amount of, of leverage coupled with the new financial in instruments, such as collateralized debt obligations, allowed a housing, housing crisis to turn into a financial meltdown. While it's unclear exactly how this episode will play out, many banks today are much better capitalized and do not primarily rely on tech or crypto deposits. Additionally, uh, any economic spillover has been far concentration into the technology and venture capital industries, which are already struggling with layoffs and slowdown in demand. Now, these developments impact the Fed's upcoming rate decisions since they're underscore of unintended consequences of, rap of, of rapid rate hikes. It's likely that they created a new sense of caution for the Fed as they continue to battle inflation. Based on the market-based measures, investors no longer expect the Federal Reserve to raise rates again this year, but believe that there may be a rate cut by September. Interest rates have also fallen with a two-year Treasury yield declining over one percentage point to around 4.1%. Ironically, this means that the very bonds were on un unrealized losses on banks balance sheets are now worth more while these expectations can shift uh, rapidly they show how much sentiment has shifted in the past week so what's the bottom line here with recent failures of that are very problematic parallels to 2008 are premature investors ought to stay diversified in the situation stabilized while focus on a bigger picture rather than a minute by minute speculation. This is where having an advisor in your corner is so important so that you don't make knee jerk reactions and your portfolio is built aligned with your overall wealth plan. This is what we do here at Clear Picture Financial. So if you're interested, reach out to our office, schedule a conversation to see how we can help you. The phone number is 843-743-2926. Now, we got our definitions and methodologies here for you to review as well. We have a great partnership with Clearonomics, <laughs> Clear Picture Financial, Clearonomics, two separate entities, okay? I want to be very clear there. And then here's all our disclosures here at Prime Capital Investment Advisors. Just want to say thank you so much for your time, for your interest, and for listening. We are here to help you help you reach your financial goals and to weather this storm that we are in right now in this economic environment. Thank you as always and be blessed.